Now, what we're going to do now is a series of exercises. We're going to break the scale into third intervals. We're going to do thirds and sixes, triads, four note arpeggios, and finally harmony. The word interval just means the distance between two notes. So third intervals, instead of playing one, two, three, we simply go the first note, one, and go straight to the third note. Then we play the second note of the scale, and we go to a note that's three away from it. Let's see where it would be. One, two, three. So our first two third intervals would be the next one, three away from it. It's like playing every other note in the scale. Let's go one up. careful here, the fourth finger is doing the job, they're right behind each other. Let's take that up one more time slowly. Now we'll come backwards. Here we'll use the low F sharp to complete the exercise. One more time, I'll just play that smoothly without talking this time. That sits nicely over the chord. Again, these <coughs> intervals are going to be used in your soloing all the time. They may sound a bit bland at the moment because we haven't injected any rhythm to them or dynamics. Uh, but later on, we, we'll look at how we, we use them in a soloing situation. Situation, sorry. Um, the next one we're going to look at is sixth intervals. The reason I've chosen thirds and sixes is that they're the most usable um, to get started with. Um, you may want to do fourth intervals, fifths, etc. later on, but thirds and sixes are the most useful. Um, sixth intervals, I'll show you a means by which you'll to speed up um, how you learn these. Instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, there's our first sixth interval. Look how similar it was to the third interval. It's just over one string. Now I'm going to call this an angle. Have a look at this angle. Now the next sixth interval is exactly the same angle, only it's fingers four and three. Again, it's the same shape. So the first two, angle, angle, and the next one, I'm going to refer to this as a stretch. I'll try and take these two fingers away, do you see? There's no string skip now, it's on the fifth string, and the fourth finger is on the fourth string. So, so far we've got angle, angle, stretch. Now the next three notes in the scale are exactly the same three shapes. Angle, angle, stretch. Let's do those. Angle, angle, stretch. Angle, angle, stretch. Next one again, angle. You can see the same shape. Now we've got a new shape. Three shapes all together. This new shape is called a flat. In other words, the fourth finger is simply falling back. Strings four and two. next one again a flat 
strings three and one and finishing off with an angle now to recap on that you can learn it very very quickly by just thinking angle angled stretch angle angled stretch angle flat flat angle that should save you a lot of time counting again i'll do it for you angle angle stretch angle angle stretch angle flat flat angle and we'll go back down sharp finish very very useful interval very very melodic you'll hear it in a lot of different styles of music and um, they would have been called interval skips because we were playing one note and following it with the the distance of the interval the sixth these two notes can be played simultaneously creates a oh, nice harmony. Okay, so if we had an imaginary melody, anything at all that you can think of. You can map them out with sick intervals. etc. Very, very useful. Notice that uh, on the one that we call the flat, where they, in reality, basically, when you're playing the scale or improvising, you will probably use two fingers for this. So you may wish to add vibrato. So you will use two fingers. But in the practice, in the workout, continue with the exact fingering. It just keeps everything nice and uniform that your whole scale workout will be played with exactly the same fingers. Each note will be played by the same finger. Very important.